Coming up on TPI. I know of your conversion story and the gentleman that spoke to you, yeah. but I'm interested to know about this first performance of Are You Ready to Get Down with Jesus Christ <laughs> Tonight? Yo, man, wow, do you know? Man, why such a long title? Why judgment right now? That's what I want to know. Why are you throwing shade on this, on this classic that I wrote? Hello, welcome to TPI. I'm your host, Muiwa. I hope you know you didn't tune in by accident. I believe this appointment has been on the book since before time. There is something good in store for you. Sometimes life hits us so hard, it's difficult to recover. In this Think About It segment, Kathy Edwards shows us how we can bounce back from even the toughest adversity. If you want to be successful in life, you got to learn how to bounce back. Life is a series of ups and downs. What goes up must come down. And when you're down, the only way is up. Bouncing back on this trampoline is easy for one simple reason, the springs. If you look beneath this mat, you'll find a bunch of springs surrounding the trampoline. They make bouncing easy, and fun. Without them, there is no bounce. The Bible is exactly what you need to bounce your way through life. Many find it difficult to bounce back in life because they have nothing to spring them forward. But when you begin to believe the truth found in the Bible, the springs of faith make it easy and fun for you to bounce back. Faith in God's Word will help you bounce up and down, back and forth, from side to side. No matter what life brings, you'll be able to bounce right through it. And here's an added bonus. Bouncing on a trampoline helps you get fit physically, while bouncing into God's Word helps you get fit spiritually. So start using your springs of faith to bounce back today. Okay, the story's about bouncing, not sleeping. <laughs> Oops, let's do that again. So start using your springs of faith to bounce back today. Think about it. Great advice. Whatever life brings your way, don't stay down. Get back up and get back in the game. Up next, Dumi Lopang is a rising media mogul in Botswana. However, when he first started this venture, he made a decision that his business would operate by the book, which meant no bribery. He wasn't sure how long his company would last. Not only is he still in business, he's flourishing. Erica Linney sat down with Dumi to discover the keys to his success. So let's talk about where you are now in the process of starting out as an employee and where you are now. What is your business? What do you do and what is your, your official title? I'm involved in media. So I'm in business and then I'm in the media mountain in particular. We started off with one asset, which is a radio station. And uh, we've now moved into print, uh, magazines, uh, outdoor advertising, uh, recently into, into TV. So my, I'm called group executive director. And what that means is that uh, all the different managing directors report report to myself. And then we're also into communications. So we've got a public relations company and a digital um, agency, as well as a 360 marketing agency. So when you started off as an employee years and years and years ago, did you see yourself where you are now? I've always liked business. So when I was, we, I started working for the radio station. I mean, we set it up, the first private radio station in Botswana, et cetera. My plan was that I would do this as a job, but in, on the side, I had a little telco company, which I thought was where my future lied. But in terms of where I was, in terms of media, uh, I just saw myself as an employee. And for me, I thought media was just really a means to an end, that I needed full-time employment whilst growing my own personal business. I had no idea that within that particular radio station where I was just an employee, I'd end up being a shareholder and then using that as the foundation 
to um, uh, sort of move into other different media and, and now other countries, yeah. So when you became a Christian, from what I understand, you began reading the Bible and discovered a lot of principles and things in the Bible that could help you with your business. What were some of the things you identified? Well, I think the major thing is that when I was going through my marriage counseling, our marriage counselor um, asked me, so what is your vision? What's your dream? What would you like? And I said, I'd like to be a Pan-African businessman. She's like, okay, it's important we discuss that now. Why are you in business actually? I was like, well, I mean, I want to live a good life, look after my kids. And she said, well, firstly, you must understand that when you go into business and you believe God has called you for this, that this is a ministry. And I was like, it's a ministry? Like, yes. And, and it was like, okay, um, if you do certain principles, follow certain principles in business, you will see your business grow. Before I became a believer, I tried everything to get business according to the ways of the world. But the moment that I understood that I am placed in this to be a kingdom businessman, to be a financier of kingdom work, and that once I started practicing and tithing, immediately, you know, the Lord opened up doors for us. So I then try and entrench that in all of uh, the people who we hire to look after our various businesses, to say, we don't pay bribes, you know, we uh, about honesty and integrity. Sometimes it takes long for a business to grow and progress, but that's fine. You know, at the Lord's timing, it, uh, that breakthrough will happen. And I'd rather that than we, we take shortcuts. And, and once I understood that that's the responsibility I've been given by, by God, and that's why I'm in business, it changed my complete perspective that, you know, God is watching at all times and uh, I can lie to people, but I can't lie to him. So has there ever been a time where your business suffered because you wouldn't do a bribe or Absolutely. wouldn't? Tell me about some of those times. Absolutely. So one of our businesses the, that we are in is an advertising agency and um, there was a, a tender out uh, for a three-year contract to do uh, marketing and public relations services for some entity. And uh, the contract was $300,000. The night before the submission, one of the executive members of this entity approached the, um, the managing director of our ad agency and said, listen, you need to give us uh, $60,000. It's uh, for three of us ex-co members who will make the decision on where this contract is awarded. He came back and he told him that, no, we're not interested, we don't do that. And then the next morning they canceled the tender just before the submission deadline. So, I mean, and at the time, I think the agency was going through a period where uh, a lot of our advertisers had reduced their spend. So this would have been uh, uh, a welcome uh, contract. Yes, good money for you. Absolutely, but you won't believe it. About a year later, uh, I was called in by, um, the, it's called the Directorate of, uh, of Economic Crime because they had caught wind of, of, of that there's something funny around this tender. And we were called in and we were interrogated about, about this, but because our hands were clean, we were able to speak openly about this thing and tell them as much as, as, as we knew. When you're in business, you have a drive to succeed. Most entrepreneurs have that drive to succeed. And money, a lot of times, is the measure of success. I think that creates greed. How do you protect yourself against greed that then leads to bribery, that leads to corruption? Well, as a believer, first and foremost, my main business partner and I, we always pray and we put everything in God's hands. So, if something happens or doesn't happen, we believe God has allowed it to go that way for a particular reason. So we are relaxed because for me, I understand it's not about me and that when I think of where I was, where I started off just as an employee to where I am today, it's truly God. And if he has brought me this far, I don't need to worry about where he's gonna take me. What I must focus on is ensuring that I remain true to the values and the principles that have helped me come this far. What do you hope to achieve? When people talk about our group, it will not just be that, wow, you know, they've grown so big and they've been, but it'll be like they have made a change in terms of how we as Africans perceive ourselves because we will control the narrative in terms of what Africa is. My prayer is that we will get to a point where 
people will say, wow, these people as their media platform played a small part in this African reformation and gave a voice to the voiceless who typically wouldn't get on the normal platforms to speak and be heard. And at the end of the day, you know, Africa will turn back to God and we will be the Africa that God intended us to be in the beginning. Very useful advice from Dumi there. Well, after the break, we spotlight one of Africa's greatest evangelists. You won't want to miss it. Stay with us. Your Turning Point experience doesn't have to end when the program is over. Follow us on your favorite social media. Welcome back. Dr. Umar Akwai has crossed the globe preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's dedicated his life's mission to share the word of God with everyone he comes in contact with, as well as provide practical needs to the poorest communities by building schools and hospitals. Here's his inspiring story. Father, on my right hand side on my left hand side, arise and let your people's enemies be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move! Dr. Omar Opai's ministry has spanned over 50 years. It's been reported that some of his evangelistic meetings have had close to a million people in attendance daily. I have covered the whole world except uh, Russia. I used to smuggle Bible to China and hold small meetings in China. I have, I have had a big program in Germany, in different parts of the world. Growing up, Uma was a rebellious child. He began drinking alcohol and smoking weed at an early age. His father died when he was a young teenager and Uma went to live with his uncle. There, he had a turning point. The day after I arrived, Bori in Ogoni, there was a big crusade. The preacher said there are some young boys who smoke Indian hemp, who smoke together, who drink alcohol. And I raised up my hand and said, sir, I am one of them. <laughs> the man said, come forward here. That's how I met Christ. Two weeks after, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Since then, Omar has operated in the grace of the Holy Spirit, demonstrating the amazing power of God throughout Nigeria and the world. Omar recalls some of his most memorable outreaches. So I came to Lagos with 5,000 first choir and 23,000 prayer volunteers. And I hired 84 Mulue buses that gave free transportation from different areas of Lagos to the National Stadium, Surulere. In Ibado, the newspaper reports called the program Miracle Galore. Um, in Medugri, uh, Sharif was governor of Medugri, Bonus State when we came. He asked me to cancel the program because Boko Haram boys were determined to kill me. The first night of the meeting at the Medjugorje Stadium, we, I and my chief of staff, we just sang an ordinary, simple chorus. And cripples began to walk with their wheelchairs. Others were following under the anointing. Omar has held thousands of evangelistic averages and believes God is still working miracles today as he did in the past. Although God has used him in extraordinary ways, Omar says his life is not free from challenges, like burying two of his children who drowned while he was out preaching. If any man will follow Jesus, 
let him deny himself and take up his cross. When you have denied yourself, you have become like a dead man. You have stopped asking questions. You expect nothing. You say to God, as you lead, I will follow. A man in that position will have nothing to worry about. That's where I am. Dr. Ma also has a word for everyone who wants to be used by God in ministry. They should diminish, let, let Christ increase. They should not try to build their own kingdom, but build God's kingdom. Their hunger will be to know him more. Know him intimately. Know him uh, experientially. Know him as a living reality and know him livingly. I love what he said. Let what you do for God be for him and not for the applause of men. Amen to that. After the break, hip-hop artist Tadashi joins me on the TPI stage. Stay with us. You don't want to miss this interview. Hip-hop artist Tadashi hit the scene in 2009 and has been soaring at the top of the charts ever since. Today we get a chance to know the man behind the music. Please welcome Tadashi. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, bro. I feel a lot safer that you're, you're around. Yeah, yeah, you should. Because you're a big fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tell you what, your fans, yeah. they're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Shall I just give away their secrets? Do it. You feel free. These Christian hip hop lovers that we have on set, <laughs> I had to keep them away. But but you 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 didn't start uh, in hip hop. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, in your family, there's a line of military and sportsmen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yourself, your desire was to to do the the, the thing that's well known for the area of right. of America you come from, which is yeah. American football, right. Uh, right? Quarterbacks and all. Yeah. yeah. But tell me what happened and why you didn't follow that route. Yeah, man, I I was the black sheep in the family. I had a lot of um, a lot of outlets growing up um, in artistic expression, playing instruments, writing, storytelling, acting, all of that. Uh, and I think my mom thought it was a good way to expose me to the world. But at some point, she thought I would come back to reality, <laughs> go to college, get right. a degree, university, and then leave there and get a job, nine to five, pay the bills, and just do that routine. Um, and so it was a real funny convo when I called her and was like, Mom, um, so I, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do rap. I think I'm going to rap. And she's literally on the phone. She was like, rap what? What, what is that? What does that mean? I was like, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm a rap. I'm gonna do hip hop. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, um, is that after you get off work? Like, what are you gonna do for money? And I was like, no, don't worry. She it's sounds like a Nigerian parrot. She, she might be, no lie. <laughs> she might be. And she said, man, I, I just want to make sure that you're, you're gonna actually do something that'll provide for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And I was like, trust me, I, I think I will. And, and I haven't looked back. Because I, I wanted to make music. And yeah. my mother, who was a, a singer and a broadcaster, yeah. said to me, what kind of music, music are you talking? My friend, go and get a proper <laughs> degree. So, so I ended up doing a business degree. But, but you, you talk about uh, getting injured yeah. as a sportsman. And, and later on, you, you consider that to be something of all things working together for good. Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I, I played football in college, um, and while I was in school, I got injured. Um, and it was an injury that I had no clue about, which made it kind of harder because it's something that could have been prevented. Um, but I have scoliosis, um, and my spine is curved in three places. The doctor says it looks like an S. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. That was my reaction. I was like, whoa, okay. And so I'm, 
I'm in this place where I'm, I'm heartbroken because I'm, I'm actually physically hurt. Um, I'm heartbroken because uh, the, the game I love, I can no longer play. And because um, to top it all off, um, in order to stay in school, I have to play this game to get the scholarship, yeah. to keep the money. Um, and that wasn't the case for me. It wasn't going to work out in my favor. So I ended up having to um, rework the plan. And um, it was during that downtime that I found myself just rapping in the room, just spending time rhyming mm -hmm. and having fun with my friends. And if if Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule is true, right. my 10,000 hours came during rehab and injury. So Wow. Now that injury then becomes the thing that gives you time to learn to rhyme, which mm -hmm. becomes a vehicle mm -hmm. that God is using to, to touch many lives yeah. across the world. Wow. But yeah. um, I know of your conversion story and the gentleman that spoke to you, yeah. but I'm interested to know about this first performance of are you ready to get down with Jesus Christ <laughs> yo, tonight? Yo, man, wow, <laughs> do you know about this song? Huh? So this was your this was your first. Uh, that was my first public performance of anything rap. But man, why why such a long title? Why judgment right now? That's what I want to know. <laughs> why are you throwing shade on this on this classic that I wrote? Bruh. No, it was, it was, trust me, that was, it was an embarrassing time. <laughs> uh, my buddy who led me to the Lord um, was the same person who said, man, you're always in your dorm room rhyming. Mm -hmm. Why don't you write something down and we can go uh, enter this talent show on campus and we can perform it. No, I'm good, bro. No, I'm good. I'm not going to do that with you. Uh, and at the time in my, you know, in my 19 year old brain. I'm like, you don't get girls rapping about Jesus. That's I'm trying to get a girlfriend, bro. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Good point. That's not gonna happen. Um, but he convinced me to do it, mm. and we we do the performance, and the the song title: Are you ready to be down with Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ tonight? But we still remember it. How many years later? That's sad. That I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not impressed. Uh, I you remember this, so you can make fun of me. That's what that was. <laughs> that's, that's not the same. But <laughs> but. After we finished, um, there was, I want to say there was eight people in the competition, mm -hmm. um, and we got seventh, so we didn't get last. That's a plus. I didn't, I didn't lose. I lost, but I didn't get last. Um, but when it was over, man, so many people started to come up and just kind of go, man, you got to be anybody who's brave enough to get on stage and do what you did. You got to love Jesus. Like, by, by the way, one of the, one of the greatest rappers that we have in Europe, yeah. who's, I mean, he's won more awards than any gospel artist yeah. in, in the, in, in the UK. Uh, his name is Governor B. He's yeah. a, a younger brother of mine. When describing you, he said, he said, Tadash is a, he's a ball of energy <laughs> on stage. And then he says, you, t you have a way of taking the relevant message of the, the message of the gospel mm -hmm. and making it, relevant to the for the culture to, to mm. hear uh, so you didn't do so badly after after that I you know? didn't I, I guess not I appreciate that Governor B is a great guy man I'm we've met once in life but I've just kept up with his career and everything he's got going and he's a great dude so thank you to him for saying that man but not everything has been I mean just like the injury wasn't wasn't planned but you know yeah. you're where you are you you had a moment in in your life where you lost your son mm -hmm. which became quite a quite a, a, a big chapter in your, in your journey. Yeah. Uh, tell us briefly about after it, where you're at, mm -hmm. and has uh, all things worked together for good? Right. Um, so a few years ago, um, my wife and I, we lost our son Chase. He was one, and um, that took me completely out of everything. Um, you you kind of live this life as a Christian, assuming um, that you're, you're going to die with a king's ransom, you know, like everything is going to go your way. Mm -hmm. You're doing all these great and phenomenal things. So of course it should. Um, well, that's, that's what a lot of our preachers tell us. What, that's what we're told. And then you read your Bible and you see quite different <laughs> mm -hmm. for, for Jesus and for the people who followed him. Um, and so for me, once that reality hit and I got home and heard that news, um, it shook my world to the core. Um, years of, of counseling for myself, uh, for me and my wife, uh, spending time away from music and travel and really fighting to be healthy, entering back into counseling to do it again. Um, I find myself now in this place where uh, I still face it. It doesn't leave. Uh, the reality of his loss is, is ever present daily. Um, but what is here is also this, this unique place of, um, of trust 
and believing that God is good and now, he does good. Now, Tadesh, we, we've got about 30 seconds left. And I wonder if you could speak to uh, someone who's at a place of loss where you, you were mm -hmm. or, and, and just can't make sense of how can a good God allow this to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also p people who, because of that, have become quite uh, worried about the gospel. Yeah. You're not, yeah. Romans 1.16, I'm yeah, not ashamed yeah. of the gospel. Right, right, I wonder right. if you could sp speak to them to encourage them. I would just tell people, man, that there is a there's a reality in life where you find yourself struggling. Everybody will face it. And in that reality, you have to remember the relationship with God is real uh, and that God is good and he does good. Um, I've learned in my experience, suffering is in the world, not because of God, but because of an enemy that we have in Satan. I believe that he's the reason why Job suffered. He's the reason why Jesus had to go to the cross. The sin brought into the world through him um, and, and us responding to that in the way we did uh, cause suffering. But I believe that um, regardless of that, God is still good and he does good. And so for anyone doubting that, uh, I would point you to the realities of the gospel again and the fact that when we were lost and we were unable to find any hope that he came to us, we were lost and he found us. And so um, God is good and he does good. Tadashi, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Thank you for having me, man. I can't think of a better way to close the show. We'll leave you with Tadashi's latest video. From all of us here at TPI, goodbye and God bless. Cheat code.